phones without internet access with it, suggesting that mobile phone conversations in surfing the web, that would also be texting, are similarly associated with distraction. But whether the most digitally active people are more distracted because their excessive online activity makes them jittery, or, and this is an important, important point, more hyperactive, or whether on the other, it's the other way around. Maybe they are more drawn to these activities because they are naturally short of attentional control. That would be me. It is unclear. I agree with the conclusion. Dr. Hadlington does have a theory, however, that it is a mix of the two. In other words, it draws us both in. In other words, those people already suffering from short attention spans, that would be me, are drawn to the distractions of modern technology, which makes it even harder for them to pay attention to their surroundings. His research has been published in an area and a very important one, and we are using technology on a daily basis, but we don't understand the effects it's having on us. We don't know what's actually happening to our cognition when we are using this technology, and that's the important thing. When we do know from this research, what we do know from this research is that there are some statistically significant numbers of people, and my wife would be one of them, who say they use the internet or their phone a lot and who experience cognitive failures. Absolutely cannot go without the phone for one hour is what I'm talking about. The study asked people a series of questions to determine whether they experienced certain types of blunders defined as factors relating to their ability to focus, physical blunders such as bumping into things, and memory. The study was conducted among 107 men and 103 women, and it breaks it all down there, uh, who spent an average of 22.95 hours a week online. Now again, the hours per week online is a tough one because you need to unwind. I use my computer as some people use a TV. I would not argue that that is using the internet if I'm shutting everything else off. So that's 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 a tough one. Um, researching the show. What am I going to do? Buy 50 newspapers? I, I get that you need to be online. I understand that. But it's sucking you away to the point where when you don't have your cell phone on you, you'll try to watch the the uh, internet or something. Or watch watch the internet. You'll try to watch something uh, on a documentary, a movie, on anything. You'll start clipping your toenails, or you'll start uh, reading the, uh, the the Wendy's bag in front of you. Why? Because your technology is destroying your ability to focus. And if you already have a problem focusing, it makes it even worse. Friends, that brings us to the ever-loving Dumdy of the day. And is there any surprise to anybody, I'm sure there isn't, <laughs> that that Dumdy of the day is going to the one and only Obama administration? No, absolutely no surprise at all. Let me get our Dumdy music called up here just for our loving uh, dear leader. Here we go. Yep, there it is. What, you might ask, is he getting the dumb D4? We'll just let this play in the background as we read it. How about using fossil fuels to protest the usage of fossil fuels? Obama will jet set to the Arctic to warn about global warming. Now, first of all, we know from ClimateGate.com, we know from the works of Lord Moncton, we know from studies released by NASA themselves that the planet has not warmed in 18 years. Man is not warming the planet because he's driving his car or burning coal. He might be giving himself lung cancer. As a matter of fact, he is. But he is not warming the planet. Not. But if we were, this would be the stupidest thing you've ever heard. And it still ranks up there high enough to get the dumb knee of the day. The Obama administration will kick off a massive campaign Monday to push the president's agenda to cut carbon dioxide emissions just months ahead of the United Nations Global Warming Summit in Paris. 
This climate campaign, oddly enough, includes a trip to the Alaskan Arctic by President Barack Obama to call attention to the effects of global warming. According to the Washington Post, which was briefed on the administration's new campaign by an unnamed source prior to the unveiling to the public. Do you have any idea how much this is going to put into the atmosphere? Listen, power plants are the single biggest source of harmful carbon pollution that contributes to climate change, which of course we know isn't happening. Obama said in a transcript of a video that was given to the Washington Post, Friends, the, the people that fund in Greenpeace, one of the founders has now said it isn't happening. The cat is out of the bag, and Obama's still parading around as if he's got some kind of intelligence to him, and he doesn't. Until now, there have been no federal limits on the amount of pollution that these plants can pump into the air. Think about that. That's not true. There have been limits. That, that's, just, that's just a categorical lie. Ironically, Obama's trip to the Arctic will emit lots of carbon dioxide, the very greenhouse gas that he blames for causing catastrophic global warming. Yet as he's prepared to emit tons of highlight, emit tons to highlight why rising emissions are detrimental to the planet, he's calling the EPA's carbon dioxide rules for power plants. And again, it all trickles down. It all trickles down to the bills that you pay all the time. But listen to this. Using calculation from the president's flight to the Everglades on Earth Day, Obama will travel 3,361 miles from Washington, D.C. to Alaska's Emmendorf Air Force Base, where Air Force One generally stops to refuel. During that trip, Air Force One will consume 16,805 gallons of jet fuel which emits more CO2 when burned than conventional gasoline, which he would like to see more expensive for you. Based on government data, Obama's jaunt to the Arctic aboard Air Force One will emit 354,585 pounds of carbon dioxide, about 161 metric tons for just one leg of the flight. That's equivalent to what 22 homes emit from burning electricity every year on the annual emission or the annual emission of driving 33 cars. That would be for a whole year. This he's doing to fight and combat global warming. That is our genius leader, President Obama, who gets and earns the dumb D of the day. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off, asking you to go to themediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself, because every penny that you give towards us goes towards a better show. If you want to donate to The Correct Views, you can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can donate to The Media Speaks, of course, at the site, where we work nonstop to keep you abreast of all the news, friends. Good night, and God bless.